First, we're going to derive the preference part worths with no marketplace simulation. We'll inspect these results. Afterward, we're going to then bring back in all of that market marketplace simulation information and conduct actual market simulations. Here's the initial setup for our conjoint analysis. Notice that we have a selection for the actual conjoint design, and we're going to be estimating consumer preferences or utilities based on the actual pro product ratings. We're selecting the estimated from product ratings option here because we actually presented the actual product to people and had them score them. By conducting this analysis, we'll then derive preference part worths. Or in other words, how much, pe how much each individual person valued each individual level of each attribute. When we run the model, the first thing we get is aggregated results. Even these aggregated results, even though that's not going to be our focus, we do actually see some interesting insights. On average, we can already see the most preferred product. On average, people prefer a 48 can option with 70 day, seven days of cooling, strangely a 90 day limited warranty instead of a one year no questions asked warranty, and a hard top cooler. But even while we fixate on these averages, the other results in this summary table reveal to us that there was definitely heterogeneity in consumer preferences. Notice the rather large standard deviations that indicates to us that different people valued these different combinations of attribute levels quite differently. And even here, we can see that there had to be at least one person who placed enormous value on a 36 can option rather than the 24 or 48 can option. This chart shows the same numbers that we saw previously, just the averages. Again, take a look at this little green spot here for the one year no questions asked and 90 day limited warranty. What could be going on? First, notice that people's preference, uh, preference score as a result of the warranty is relatively low compared to the other three attributes, so it doesn't seem like it matters so much. Also, the difference between these two options is relatively small. This might just be due to error, imperfect data, or if, there's, if this is actually real, perhaps consumers saw the one year no questions asked warranty as a signal of poor quality. This pie chart shows us the relative importance weight of each attribute. Here we can really see that the material or the hard top, soft top choice had the biggest driver impact on someone's overall preference for the cooler. Size and cooling length also had an important role. Warranty, on the other hand, regardless of which version of the warranty we presented, had a relatively small impact on someone's overall preference for the cooler. The next set of results, the detailed preference part worths, the most important key outcome of our conjoint analysis. Each one of our 85 respondents now has a beta weight for every one of the combinations of attributes and levels. Let's open this up in Excel, which you can easily do in Ingenious, and work with these parameters. Here's a little snippet screenshot from an Excel spreadsheet that I slightly adjusted based on the ingenious output. Notice I added a series of dummy codes along the top of each one of the attributes and levels. This is my way of flipping the switch, if you will, for a particular product combination. Right now, we're looking at a 48 can, four day, 90 day limited warranty, hard top cooler. For respondent one, we simply plug in zeros and ones as appropriate to simulate the version of cooler that I just that I just show in the Excel spreadsheet. And we solve it all the way through, which is the equivalent is using this sum product function here, we find that this person most prefers this particular version of the cooler. In the ingenious output, all consumer preference scores will vary between 0 and 100. 100 indicating the version of the cooler that they most preferred and 0 the one that they least preferred. So what have we learned so far? Well, first, knowing consumer preference patterns is extremely valuable. We can take individual level models of our market, because we have them for all 85 individual persons, and we can now sort, aggregate, simulate with this data. The simulation that we're about to conduct in Ingenious is just meant to help simplify some of the more basic forms of analysis we might do. If you need to do something more complex with your simulation, you need to build your own spreadsheet. Let me illustrate some of the things that we've already learned. Here, I've plotted the betas for hardtop cooler for all 85 respondents. Notice that we can see that most people prefer a hardtop cooler. In other words, the beta weight is something greater than zero. On the other hand, we also know that about 21% of our participants prefer a soft top cooler. That's because the beta for the hardtop cooler was zero. Further, we also know that every single person's preference is scaled between zero and 100. That tells us that for about 27% of our market, over half of their entire preference score is driven by their preference for a hardtop feature. In other words, hardtop really matters for this particular market. A simple pivot table reveals some insights. 
In the inside, we have the average utility score for this most preferred version of the cooler. But the cross tab actually splits the results by household income and gender. In general, all gender and income combinations are pretty enthusiastic about this optimal version of the product, which isn't a surprise. But we can really see here that relatively higher income women are extremely enthusiastic about this optimal combination. This type of insight can be useful for marketing, marketing communication design, promotion, packaging, labeling, and so on. Before we dive into the ingenious simulation features, I need to emphasize one more time. If your needs for simulation are beyond Ingenius's capacity, you can simply build your own spreadsheet. There's nothing that's happening with an Ingenius that couldn't be done with an Excel. Let's give a concrete example of this. By default, Ingenius can only simulate introducing one new product into the market at a time. However, what if your company was willing to introduce two versions of a product, such a light and elite version of a product, at the same time? It is absolutely possible to simulate this condition and estimate how changes to market share will be impacted across the entire space, but you'd have to construct your own spreadsheet.